Okay, good evening. I'm Frank Cordes, uh, those of you who don't know me, mayor of this great city. And thank you for coming to the town hall meeting. Uh, June, obviously, a lot of people away, different things have to do, and so we don't have the turnout that we normally have, but that's okay. Okay, so here's what our schedule is going to be. First, we're going to talk about garbage. Now, we have a new sheriff in town. Not yours, Angelo. Uh, just a term. Uh, Waste Pro. And Waste Pro just started June 1st. Now, first, every time we've asked Waste Pro to step up to the plate for some humanitarian reason they have. Commissioner Schechter had a problem in his area, had a fire. Uh, Waste Pro just came and said, we'll do whatever we can to make sure that we get that taken care of. Miss Pines USA, I get a last minute call. She was on her way to Las Vegas. You know, they just had that pageant in Las Vegas. So she was going out to compete. The, the, um, the investor backed out. She didn't have the money. I called Waste Pro. And sure enough, Russell Mackey and Tim Bowers and all the people stepped right up and made our Miss Pines go out to Las Vegas. So they're just a great, great organization. Now, we wanted them to come up and explain, you know, what we're doing with bulk, what we're doing with the garbage pickup, and the size of the recycling. Let me first say, recycling is mandatory. Mandatory. Every time I drive around, I don't see a cart out there or a tub. We're cheating ourselves, we're cheating the state of Florida, and we're cheating our environment. Governor Christ, when he was governor, made a commitment that we're going to have 75% less carbon footprint by the year 2025. To do that, we have to recycle. Not only is it good for the environment, it saves us money. For us not putting glass and all those articles in garbage and solid waste, that means that container gets less and less weighty, which means they charge us less. So it's just a win-win. And then they pick up the recycling, we get monies for that. So it's, it's and, and now the cart, some people said it's too big, you know, blah, 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 I got the, I got the calls. We're going to rectify all of those things. Cedar Woods had a problem because they're a community that has got the old cement for the tub. We're going to take care, we're already working with them, we're going to take care of all those problems. And Waste Pro has said, and I'm going to let them say it, if you have too big of a, a cart, they'll accommodate us by getting us a smaller one not 40, no, no, we have 41,000 single family homes in Pembroke Pines. And by the way, and, and by the way now, with this new garbage company, the Mayor's Cafe just got our bill today, and it's a lot less than the other company. So you are paying a lot less than you were with the other company with the negotiation from Waste Pro. We're very happy about that. Clean trucks, good service, going to be good service, right? And then, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Is that it? Enjoy the game. You want, sir, you have a question? What happened to the what? The old company? I don't know. They went into where the old companies go. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mackey. Thank you, Mr. Bowers, everybody. Damon. So, Chief, without further ado, did you want to introduce our great police department in the crime suppressing and burglary specialty? Okay, tonight we're going to make it brief, but we're going to give you three overviews of the burglary suppression team, the crime suppression team, and our community affairs unit. Three valuable resources available to you. Let's see, we'll start with the burglary suppression team. So, Sergeant Mike Pazienza, you want to come up, please? And now for a quick overview. Good evening, everybody. My name is Sergeant Michael Pazienza, and I've been with the city 21 years. I served in uh, the DB as a detective and got promoted and served in traffic homicide, and now I'm back upstairs in the Detective Bureau serving you as a burglary suppression team sergeant. I do have five members of our detectives that are out there, and we're deployed in specific areas that our crime and analysts check out, and they find specific areas that are getting hit with burglaries. They pass that information on to me, and we deploy with different array of vehicles. We have all kinds of different types of cars that we go out and uh, 
do surveillance with and hopefully catch some of these burglars that are doing them in progress. But we could not do this without the information from the General Crimes Unit, who also help us with their cases, and they give us information. We also call the jails and find out who's out on probation, you know, who's out in our city walking around, who shouldn't be walking around, and uh, little kids during the school year that should be in school or walking around in our streets. These are the, some of the people we target or some of the kids we target, we watch them. Like uh, the mayor said, I was parked in a driveway and I saw a 15 year old kid walking down the street and should be in school. We watched him and sure enough, we, are, we approached him and we arrested him. Um, he gave us some false information or whatnot and four, four or five days later, we arrested him again for committing a burglary like three blocks over. And uh, so it's working. You know, we checked with other cities, and other cities are having burglary issues also. Um, since we've deployed the BST team, the burglary suppression teams, you know, it's gone down. It's gone down. Burglars in the cities have decreased. Uh, I don't have a specific number for you, but they've been gone down. They've gone down. So, does anybody have any questions of me? No. Keep doing good work. Thank you. Okay. Next up, Scott Kushai is going to talk to you about the crime suppression team. Scott. Hello, my name is Officer Scott Kushai. I'm part of your city's crime suppression team. And what our job is, and kind of like the burglary suppression team is, is our job is to make your life as comfortable as possible by making it as uncomfortable as possible for people who come to the city to commit crime. And we are a four-person unit with one sergeant. And we cover an area that's a little about 34 square miles, 150,000 residents. And I don't say that to tell you an excuse or tell you that we're, we're not staffed enough. I tell you that simply to say that the information that you provide to us is the information that we use to go out and to saturate areas that we're having a particular problem in. There's two ways that we are um, sent out into an area. The first, is Sergeant Pazienza mentioned, is through our crime analyst, which is an internal crime analyst who takes numbers, crunches numbers, uh, statistics, and basically sends that information to the chief. The chief then decides what is the best way to utilize our resources and send us out in those areas in those communities. The second, which involves you, and for our purposes tonight, is the most important. See, the chief assigns units, patrol officers, and regular uniforms and mark units out to areas, and they get to know that area. They get to know the folks that live in that area. They get to know the uh, businesses in that area, but the people who live in the residence, you guys, are the ones who know your residence the best. You know your neighborhood the best. You know what cars belong in a driveway and what cars don't. You know what folks work midnights or who has children, who leaves their garage door up, who has a, a dog or a cat or who walks at night or exercise. You know all those things. So the information that you provide to us is the information that we utilize uh, to go out. And the way that you relay that information to us is two, two ways. First of all, if you see a crime in progress, what do we do? We call 911. Now, our dispatchers are trained to get the, gather information that's necessary in order for us to go out and respond quickly to those incidents. But I just want to go over a couple things real quick. First of all, know where you're calling from. Know your exact address. If you live in a, a development or community, know which development or community that is. So you can provide that information to dispatchers. Second. Give them a phone number that they can contact you back with in case there's a disconnection or they need to get additional information from you. And then during that, although it's sometimes it's stressful when you're in the middle of on viewing a crime or something's happening to you, you have to have the presence of mind to provide the information to us that allows us to get there and respond to whatever your incident is. And the better the information that you give us, the better our response is. If you can provide us with information that is specific, such as a vehicle, the tag, if you can't get that, the type of vehicle it is, if you can't get that, the color, the make, or whatever that stands out about that vehicle, that information gets relayed to officers who are already on the scene. That is important for us to catch crimes in progress, but it's also important for further investigations. We had an incident that happened about, I would say, a month and a half ago where a person was paying attention. They got a partial tag to a vehicle. That information was relayed to our detectives who work with FDLE, and they were able to go back and solve that crime because just the partial numbers that that individual gave them. So that information may not solve the crime that moment, but somebody who's paying attention got that information out. 
The second way that you can contact us is if it's not necessarily a 911 emergency, you can go through our regular dispatch. You can ask for an officer to come out and give that information. You can call into Crime Stoppers. You can call, or if it's uh, something that's going on and it's not critical at that moment, you could email uh, your elected representatives. That information gets passed along to the chief as well, and he designates uh, a game plan to go out and do that. And those inf that information is important as al also. What is important in that information is the time of day that it's occurring, what specifically you see going on. So once again, that we can take our resources and move us out into that location. You know, as all officers, and I can tell you that I, I love to catch somebody committing a crime, but what's more important to me, burglary suppression team, crime suppression team, is deterrence. See, I'd love to catch the person catching, doing something bad to you, but I'd rather them not do it at all. I'd rather you have not have to be a victim, not have a marked unit outside your house taking a report, all those things, and that's what we try to do. But we cannot accomplish that without the information that you provide to us on a regular basis. I hear people all the time in homeowners meetings saying, well, you know, I, I saw something strange, but I didn't want to bother the police. Absolutely not. That is why we're here. We're, we're here to serve you at that level. If you see something and it doesn't seem right to you, call us. Let us come out and check it out. The last thing I want to say before I close is, there's a lot of question about, well, do I remain anonymous or can I give my information? And I understand the hesitancy that we have nowadays because we don't want, maybe if we're calling about a neighbor or a noise disturbance, we don't want to be the person that, that gets finger, you know, pointed at that that's the person that called. When you call our department, you can remain anonymous, but you can provide us with contact information so that we can go back and contact you if the officer has a question. We need follow-up to give additional information. You can give that information and still remain anonymous. And that helps in two ways. Once again, with follow-up investigations, but it also gives you the peace of mind that when you called and you asked us to go out, we went out and checked, and then we can give you a response to what our investigation uncovered. Oftentimes, people will say, well, I called the police, and they came out, and they didn't. I saw them drive up, and then they drove away. A lot of times, that's because they remain anonymous, and there was nobody who wanted to be contacted. So call when you see something that looks suspicious. You can remain anonymous, but give us a number that we can call you back with and let you know what's going on. I appreciate your time, and thank you for coming out. And his uh, information is a good lead on to our next guest, because what he did say, it's about partnerships, too. And uh, what you're going to find out through the Community Affairs Unit, the crime prevention strategies, they offer... A, uh, a Citizens Police Academy. They offer surveys for commercial and residential uh, properties to help you make your place harder to break into. Unfortunately, they're going to move on to the next person, but the main thing is to really make it more difficult. Crime prevention is uh, one of the key things that the Community Affairs Unit can offer you with the courses. So Clarence, if you'll come up and share a few words. Thank you, thank you. You know, I've been a police officer for over 20 years, and I tell you, and I've been in this unit for quite a few years, and I still have a strong passion for it. This is my partner, uh, Officer Manny Salinas. He's fairly new to our unit, and I, I appreciate his existence because I tell you, he's also, he's really passionate about it as well. And um, our goal is to build this partnership by encouraging individuals to be the eyes and ears for our police department, not to hesitate, once again, if you should see something. Our goal is in building this partnership is to organize that neighborhood watch and keeping it strong. And it's not just a name. But when we're coming into your community, we're working also with our crime analysts who are telling us exactly what's occurring, the facts of reported crimes. Because if you've been a victim to where your home has been broken into, and you're the only one, but you feel that this is getting out of hand. You feel that, you know what, we got to get the police more involved because, man, I can't believe they hit my house. I'm glad that I'm in this unit because I've also been a victim to where my home was burglarized. It happened when I lived in Miami Shores. And I tell you, at the time, I did not have an alarm system. At the time, I did not have the impact windows. At the time, I did not have the security cameras. So I was an easy target. But now I do. I have all that. I have all that. And that's what we preach. That's what we encourage. When we come out to the homeowners' meetings, unfortunately, 
We've had our share of burglaries in our, in our city, and not just in Pembroke Pines, but all over South Florida. Burglaries have occurred. But when we hear your concerns upon scheduling our, our homeowner meetings, if it's traffic-related issues, if it's, if it's burglaries, we're going to come out and we're going to partner with our specialized units, the traffic unit. And sometimes we have to tell people, be careful what you wish for. Because we're going to come out and we're going to enforce and we're going to do our job and we hear your concerns and we're going to address your concerns. We not just address the adult community, but we also address kids. We want to catch them young. We want to build the partnerships while they're very young. Between yesterday and today, we've, we've talked to over, what, over 200 kids? Over 200 kids. Speaking on topics such as stranger danger, and we can't drive that that topic home enough, especially when you're watching the news and you hear where three individuals have been taken and removed from their homes over 10 years. If we could stop one victim by being determined not to be an easy prey, not to go with a stranger, not to be tricked, but to be strong. Listen, folks, we just want to build that partnership. I don't care at what age. We want to invite these individuals to come to our police department. We provide tours for them. We're getting involved with the various summer programs throughout the city. And it, it's working. It's working. In building these partnerships, I tell you, um, we, we, we also have a strong explorers program. We attend the schools, the career days, the bike rodeos. Our Citizens Police Academy, we're encouraging individuals to come out, in which we've been doing it now for over 19 years. We're starting another class, I think, in, in August. So this is class 38, to where you're introduced to your police department. You're going to, you're going to get to know your police department. A couple of you have taken our class. Not all of you have passed the final test, though. But I'm sure you've enjoyed it. In graduating from our Citizens Police Academy, you become a part of our Alumni Association, the CPAAA, as well as our Citizens on Patrol, to the Parking Enforcement Program. These programs we want to build upon. I think in October, we're going to be hosting once again this year our National Night Out event, to which you'll also meet all of our specialized units. And I tell you, we're proud of our response. Each year, we have over a couple of thousands of you that have come out to meet your police department, and we appreciate it. In short, I just want you to know that our unit is to build those partnerships, is to have that comfort level, regardless of the age of our kids, that they see us as the good guys, the police officer, so that even as a little kid, they will not hesitate to become partners with our police department throughout their adolescent years into their adult life. So please support your police department and continue to get involved and thank you for your support. All right, folks, this next item is really neat. I went to a U.S. Conference of Mayors meeting and I saw this vendor have this item called C-Click Fix. This is the time where you can take out your cell phones because this is a free app that Michael Lockett, our new Information Direct Technologies Director, is going to show you how to download it onto your phone. And you're going to be able to do great things in our city so we can have thousands of eyes uh, out there. So if you, I, I, well, I'm not going to steal his thunder, but we'll talk about it after. So, Mr. Lockett? Uh, I'm going to take you through a real quick overview of the application itself. Uh, it works on Android and iPhone devices to include Blackberries. Uh, this is the home screen for the Pembroke Pines uh, application itself. Uh, three it has six key buttons. The very first one is reports, and that's how you would physically submit a new request. Uh, issues is just to the right. It allows you to follow up on your open issues. Uh, neighbors or other C-Click Fix users that you can build a community with and share input. So you may have a common concern about a broken sidewalk or uh, a issue around overgrown vegetation. You can actually vote and support an, an open issue. Uh, messages is that communication that comes back and forth between the uh, internal staff here at City of Pembroke Pines and the, uh, the residents. And then my profile kind of sets up a, a detail of who you are and how you operate within the city. Next slide. Uh, 
the very next screen is for new reports. Uh, you s simply go into this particular page and uh, the issue title, you hit that bar. It drops down a list of predefined issues and also gives you an opportunity to uh, physically enter a issue. Uh, then there's a description field. That location automatically populates based on where you are with your phone and it's within about 30 feet of accuracy of where you're physically standing at that time. Uh, the very next slide. Uh, this particular one, we, we chose to do nu nuisance of graffiti. Uh, it chose our location. The very next slide. Uh, here's the selection of different items that we currently have. There's about 60 different categories that we have predefined. And then at the very bottom of that list, there's an others if you have anything that's specific to your needs. Next slide for me. Uh, you can add a, uh, a, a physical text piece of information to each of your submissions as well. One additional slide. Uh, you can then select from your camera or from, uh, or for, you can use your camera and take a physical picture. And for this, this is great for our de departments because you, you are physically the eyes and ears. If it's a broken stop, stop sign or a missing stop sign, we know that it's not just the octagon, but it's also the pole. So we make one physical trip out. We do, you've done the reconnaissance for us, and we have good information to address those concerns for you. In the very next slide. Uh, you, at this point, you're able to save the draft or submit it. Next slide for me. Uh, and with those six steps, you've uh, submitted a request into our internal team. Uh, typically, you will re we receive that email that same day. There's usually a response of an acknowledgement that we are aware of your request. That email comes back out to you. As we work through the process to address the issue, uh, you get continued updates into that physical request is closed. Next slide. And just a quick overview of uh, the view reports of just to follow up on a report that you've sent. You can go in and check statuses of where it is in the, the work order process. And very next slide for me. And if you find other issues that are in your community, in your neighborhood, uh, for instance, a, uh, uh, a neighbor that leaves their trash bins out over the weekend, you can actually vote and submit uh, a request to support an, uh, an already submitted issue. And next slide for me. Uh, this is the uh, response email that you would get back uh, once you've submitted that request with a follow-up number. And next slide for me. And this is C-Click Fix on the city's website. Uh, it has a graphical overlay of our map there at the bottom. And if you notice, there's highlighted buttons of different colors. So the different items are defined by color and by status. Green identifies something that's been acknowledged. Uh, orange is something that's physically being, being worked on. And blue is typically a new request. And next slide for me. And uh, in the last 90 days, we've had just over, uh, uh, gosh, if I can find that number, 83 issues uh, submitted to the city of uh, Pembroke Pines. And this is an internal report that we share amongst the departments. And we work very closely to keep our service level agreement with the residents to get these items closed as quickly as we can. And that is the uh, C-Click Fix app here for the city of Pembroke Pines. Very good. Mr. Lockett, thank you. Okay, thank you all. Let's put that on our phones. All right. Now we're going to hear about the state of the city, how we are. Mr. Dodge is going to come up. You know, did you know we're the second largest city in the county? 100, almost 160,000 residents in Pines now. And we're expected to go to 180,000. So, Mr. Dodge, you want to take us through the state of the city after you did such a good job in negotiations? Thank you, Mayor. I'm Charlie Dodge, I'm the city manager, and I've been here 38 years. Um, and uh, I've been through probably 38 budget hearings, and I can't tell you how many hours and years spending in commission meetings. But the budget uh, for the fiscal year 2013-14, it looks very promising. And uh, what I can tell you is that our recommendation at this point that commission's going to hear about at our next meeting is one of no tax increase, uh, potentially no increase uh, in the fire fee. And in fact, the millage rate based upon what the mayor talks about property values going up could slightly go down. What we prepare, and we start, we start actually our budget for the next year in January uh, in 13 because it's, it's a long involved process. And we really don't get all the final information we need until about July. So the preliminary numbers that I'm sharing with the commission at this point 
it would show that the amount of revenues that are projected versus what we have as projected expenditures is about 4.5 million in a deficit. We do believe by the time we get to July or August, that certainly is going to shrink. We're going to be presenting some recommendations to the commission to even close that gap. If you could go to the next slide, please. Uh, basically, to maintain the current operating rate of 5.63. Uh, mean, maintaining the current residential uh, fire assessment rate of $234.44 and uh, the removal of the 9-11 budget due to consolidation of countywide operations. And uh, I, I'd like to address that. We've been working probably for over a year, a year and a half, the cities with the counties to get together to create a regional dispatch center. And, and that is very important because many calls now through the use of cell phones sometimes get lost. So they get lost in the area, they go to cell towers, and depending on where you are, since we're so close to Miramar, another jurisdiction, a call that should come to our department may go to Miramar or vice versa, and it is a delay. What we have been able to work out among all the cities, with the exception of two in Broward County, as well as Broward County, is to create a regional dispatch center. What that basically does, and what we were successful in doing, is having the county fund that, since it is a countywide service. That, helps, that helped reduce our deficit by 2.1 million, because they're absorbing that cost. Now, what does that mean? You already pay that in your, in your county bill, so it's really a savings to you on your city bill and there's no increase on your county bill for that because the county commission has already indicated they're going to fund it with their existing revenues. Next slide, please. This is basically a, a, a comparison of revenues to prior years. It's probably a, different one, a difficult one to see, but as you can see that our increases have been very uh, slight over the years from 0.3% to 2.3% to the current year to a negative 1.4% to an increase of 2.5%. And um, the reason for that has to deal with our ordinary costs that go up. Uh, cost of uh, utilities, cost of, of uh, insurances, uh, pension costs go up. There's so many different factors that come in to that, the number that really, uh, next slide please, because I'm talking about the, uh, I'm getting into the expenditures, but on the revenue side, as you can see, 31% of our revenue is uh, generated by uh, ad valorem taxes. Uh, those are your property taxes. Uh, we have uh, permit fees and license fees uh, that are for businesses uh, that generate about another 22%. Charges for services or for any of the fees that we may charge for a service in the park, uh, rentals, whatever it might be. And th that total of $154 million, which is proposed for next year, uh, is in fact the uh, revenues. Next slide, please. So, the first meeting in August, the Commission will have the first opportunity to look at our city budget line item by line item and make determinations in each one of the categories of what they may want to modify or increase. That is a public process. We advertise those meetings. There will be workshop meetings. And then there's public hearings that you get noticed on your trim bill. So when you get a notice of what your property taxes are and when the public hearing is on it that you may want to address, it gives you the date and the time. And if there's ever any question Regarding uh, your tax bill, you can always call City Hall, and we have someone here either in finance or in my office that can help you and assist you with that. Uh, if there are not any, if there are any questions on the budget or anything uh, regarding the city administration, I'd be happy to answer those this evening. Good job, Mr. Dodge. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dodge. Good job. So, as you can see, we're in pretty good shape, uh, and. Uh, we're, we're going to be all together on this. And again, remember, if we are only responsible as city commission for your millage on your city taxes, when you get your trim notice uh, and, the, 
and, and it's really a, a, a misnomer to call it that. I'm trying to get them to change it in Tallahassee, but they just can't seem to change it. Everybody thinks that when they get their notice, that's their bill for the, from the city. County has tax on there that you pay. You got the uh, uh, water. You got all those kinds of taxes that you pay. Uh, you know, and uh, and if you had a uh, a assessment, uh, a uh, save our homes assessment was passed many years ago, which we lobbied against because we figured in 10 years it was going to come back to bite us. It took even less than time to do that because when you have a negative, uh, when you have a negative property tax in your city, you still have to maintain that 3%. So when the Broward County property appraiser raised it up, we got the blame for it. And sometimes we have to put a, we have to at a time certain put out a, a proposed millage rate just for advertisement. And everybody gets excited that that's what the millage rate's gonna be. So those are the kinds of things we have to work around. Listen, you're all great. Thank you very, very much. How about another hand for our great police department? and all of our managers and everything. Appreciate it. Shirley. Thank you. Thank you.